Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father in Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do nothing. And that means we don't even exist without God. All right? So we got to give all praise, honor, and glory to whom is due, our Father which is in heaven, in the name of Jesus. So let's open up this Bible study. With 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 6 Then we'll skip down and read 16 through 19 So it says Moreover, brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you Which also ye have received And wherein ye stand By which also ye are saved If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you Unless ye have believed in vain for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Let's skip down to verse 16. It says, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on in, family. I pray that everybody is doing well. And I also pray that the Lord open up the eyes and the ears of all of the viewers and listeners that's tuning in now and later. May his Holy Spirit rest mightily upon us as we go through his holy word, praising him and thanking him for giving us understanding in his scriptures. So with that being said, what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ, courtesy of the Holy Ghost, sent his spirit and inspired me to do. And that is understanding and edification on the gospel of the kingdom of God. Understanding and edification on the gospel of the kingdom of God. And what we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at the reason why we read the Bible. The reason why we tell people to repent. The reason why it's so important to believe in Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, the Lord, he commissioned the disciples and those of us that truly believe in him to spread this gospel. And then shall the end come. Because the Lord is not willing that none should perish. And the gospel is the good news of the kingdom of heaven. The gospel is... You are in your sins, but Jesus Christ came and died for our sins because he was sent by the father to do this for us, to make this sacrifice for us. So if our message is not reconciling the people back to God, our message is not of God. If you have a preacher standing in front of you telling you that you ain't got to read your Bible and that you ain't got to do nothing but believe that preacher is telling you falsely because he's not giving you the information and the understanding that you need to be equipped with to serve God. Because we God is a God of knowledge. And he also told uh, Israel by the mouth of Hosea over there in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So because we don't know, we don't know how to serve God, we get destroyed. You need to understand that when you are applying the gospel to your life, your life will be much better. You got to see the benefit in this. So this is what we're going to take a look at. So everything that we do, we need to have understanding. We need to understand why we do what we do. As a matter of fact, let me just uh, read this definition to you real quick. And this is coming from uh, the American Heritage College, College Dictionary. And uh, we're going to take a look at 
what understanding is. So let's take a look at this uh, understanding. We'll start here. It says, mark by or having comprehension, good sense or discernment. Okay, so you got a, a, a good comprehension of what you are doing. So we're going to take a look at why we read the scriptures. Why it's so important for us to believe this? Because this changes the quality of our life when we repent from our sins. See, because a lot of people are in their sins and they don't even know why they need God. So it's our job. Those that got knowledge of who God is, it's our job to direct these people who don't know into the truth. We got to show them. We can't be bashing on nobody, putting nobody down, judging and condemning. Because if you do that, God going to do that to you. If God is not willing that any should perish, we shouldn't be neither. So this is what we're going to take a look at. Let's open this up over here in Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, and let's take a look at verses 1 through 11. It says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. So in other words, it's like you're a preschooler. Sit down and listen to the teacher, which is the father, and his son, Jesus Christ, who sent his spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. So we have to be obedient to what the word is saying. OK, he says, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. I'm giving you good teaching to live by. This is what enhances our quality of life. OK, he says, I, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words Keep my commandments and live. And if you pay attention, when you look around, everybody is living off of some doctrine. They believe in something. And there's only two ways to think. You either going to think righteously or you're going to think evil. There is no in between. So once again, everybody is following something. Somebody's command. Everybody is following something. But we need to make sure we choose wisely and follow the Lord Jesus Christ and his father and the instructions that he has given us. This is why he's telling us this. Now, let's see what else he says. So King Solomon goes on to say, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So don't never forget about what thus saith the Lord. I don't care how far you have fallen away from God. Repent from your sins and turn back to him because that's the gospel or the good news of the kingdom. Jesus Christ was sent to die for our sins so that we wouldn't have to die for our sins. So therefore, that pricks our conscience and we cut those things off. We stop doing the things that got our Lord crucified because if we don't, we put him to an open, open shame. And if it was possible, you'll crucify him again. That's what it means to put him to an open, sh uh, open shame, crucifying the son of God afresh. If it was possible, you would crucify him again. So we got to get wisdom. We got to get understanding. And not turn away from the word of the Lord. It says forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Who is her? Wisdom is the principal thing. So wisdom is the main thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. So in other words, whatever you do, understand why you are doing it, because sometimes you can have knowledge of something, but not really understand why the thing is working the way that it's working. So we need to have wisdom and wisdom is the beginning of wisdom or the uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom when you depart from evil. So understand why you are obeying God. You got to have a good understanding because if you don't, anybody could come along and lie to you and tell you anything. And then you'll be tossed about with every false doctrine that's out here. All right. So let's see what else. What's the benefits of getting wisdom and understanding? Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. So wisdom here is looked at as being the feminine trait of mankind wisdom if you exalt her she will promote thee wisdom is knowing how to do something 
knowing how to apply the scriptures like we sitting right here at the uh, instruction manual right now right but when we go out into the world we know how to operate we know how to deal with evil people we know how to keep our self-control in check we know how to always give honor and praise and glory to the lord we know how to use our mouth for edification as a servant of god we know how to lift people up it ain't about bashing and putting nobody down because one thing i looked at when i was reading about jesus he has something that the people needed and the people came to him because of what he had he had what they needed all right so once again he had the gospel or the words that led to eternal life and not only that Jesus was healing the sick and casting out devils. That's why he had multitudes following him because they loved him and he loved them. But anyway, it says she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver thee. So wisdom will promote you when you have the know how. Just take a look at this. So many examples in the Bible. Uh, one of the ones I really, truly love is how when Joseph he gave Pharaoh the wisdom of the dream that he had. He was able to interpret dreams, but that was a gift from God. So once again, you see how he got promoted. He went from being in prison for what? For 13 years to the viceroy or the prime minister in the land of Egypt. Because he had wisdom. So once again, verse 10, it says here, oh, my son, and receive my sayings. And the years of thy life shall be many. So when you apply the word of God to your life, this is what increases our life. It adds length of days to our life. This is what extends our life, people. It says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. So God said, I'm teaching you in a way of wisdom. I'm, I'm leading you in right paths. But hang on. Because we need to call wisdom our sister. We read this often over here. But let me show you this. Proverbs 7. Let's take a look at verses 1 through 5. It says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. So the words is the word of God. It's the truth. And what comes out of God's mouth is nothing but righteousness and wisdom and things that are right. When you really pay attention to what the Bible is saying, God has given us information on how to have a better lifestyle, a better quality of life. All right. It says, keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of thine eyes. So we got to uphold the words of God in the highest regard. And if you highly regard God, he going to highly regard you. But him that lightly esteems God, he going to lightly esteem you. Like it talked about over there in, uh, what was that? First Samuel 2 and around 32, 30 something like that. Let me see. Uh, let me just see. Let me just flash that on the screen real quick. Because I hate quoting scriptures and not uh, flashing it on the screen. Because you had so many liars running around here nowadays that uh, it don't even make no sense. But uh, let me see. Is it First Samuel 2? That's why I want to make sure. First Samuel 2. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Give me one second. First Samuel 2. It's First Samuel 2. Just give me a second while I uh, look at this real quick. Uh, where was it? I just read it not too long ago. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll be reading so much stuff. Oh, yeah. First Samuel 2 and verse 30. I'll be reading so much. I'll be forgetting sometimes. But uh, anyway. That's why we got the Holy Ghost to bring all things back to our remembrance. All right. So it says, wherefore, it's first Samuel two and 30. It says, wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me for them that honor me, I will honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So if you hate God, he going to lightly esteem you. So we got to honor God. We got to honor his word. This is the understanding that God has given us through his holy scriptures. It says, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. So this has got to be second nature. It says, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister and call understanding thy kinswoman. So you got to 
have such a relationship with wisdom and understanding that you calling them your relatives. It says that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. All right. So once again, this is what wisdom and understanding is doing. So if you got wisdom and understanding, this will keep you from falling into the mouth of a woman who trying to persuade you to do something contrary to the Lord. That's trying to talk you out of your salvation. Because you know Satan be using women to uh, uh, bring down the man. I mean, it starts with the man. The man has to have self-control. I'm, I'm in no way placing uh, all of the blame or the responsibility on a woman. I'm just saying, when we look throughout history, even starting with Adam, Satan used the woman to bring man down. Okay, I'm not in no way speaking against women, in no way, shape, or form. I'm just stating to you about what the scriptures are saying. So this is why we got to get understanding so we can be aware of all of these traps that Satan is, is laying because he can use anybody, male or female. But for the most part, we all know that man's weakness is a woman. So he said, if you call wisdom your sister and understanding your kinswoman, they will keep you in check it will keep you from giving in to the lips of a strange woman who flattering you with her words which is ultimately just she trying to destroy you all right so once again let's go over here and see what's coming out of the mouth of the lord because we just laying the foundation so that we can get some understanding on what the gospel is it's the good news of the coming kingdom of god it's the, it's the good news that the father sent his son to atone for our sins. So we ain't got to be walking around feeling guilty and down and out and condemned when we didn't fail short because we didn't forgave ourselves. Because Christ has forgiven us through the sacrifice that he made. But let's see what's coming out of the mouth of the Lord. Proverbs 2 verses 6 through 7 and it says for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So God has given us good wisdom, knowledge and understanding. He created everything that we see and cannot see. He is directing us the right way. God has all of our best intentions at heart. Okay. He have all of our best interests, should I say, with good intentions at heart for us. So it says he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So when you walk in upright in the word of God, he's defending you. He's protecting you. And when you just take an account on your life, look back on how you used to live before you started serving the true and living God. And before you started believing the gospel, look at your quality of life. That's not to say that we will not be. Uh, tried and afflicted because the Lord, he chasten every son whom he love. But at the end of the day, just because you're going through trials and tribulations, that don't mean that God don't love you. As a matter of fact, people always like to talk about, you know, how uh, over in Psalms 23, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's affliction. Like somebody was pointing out to me at, a, at, at one point. That's affliction. So, Listen, God is doing these things for our benefit. And just like King David said, he was saying how before I was afflicted, I went astray. I think that was Psalms 119 and verse 67, I think it was, or either 167, somewhere around there. But anyway, let's go over here and take a look and see what Jesus did. Let's go and look at the gospel now. Because over here in Luke 4, we're going to look at this account of Jesus fulfilling the scripture that Isaiah had prophesied about over there in Isaiah 61 and 1 through 3. But let's take a look at what Jesus did when he went into the synagogue. It says, this is Luke 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. So the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. And he stood up in there to read, to get some understanding, some knowledge. He was giving out knowledge and understanding. It says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. 
the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the ones who are brokenhearted, the ones who are humble, the ones who are sorry for their sins, the ones who are poor in spirit. It says he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How do you heal the brokenhearted? Through some words that you speak, through comforting words, it's going to be okay. I know you're going through this. I know this is happening right now at this time, but it ain't going to always be like this. Weeping endure for a moment, but joy cometh in the morning. That's the gospel. So it's the good news. And this is what's supposed to be preached throughout the whole world. It says to preach deliverance to the captives, to the ones that's bound up by the strongholds and afflictions that Satan has them bound up in. We are given information that's contrary to Satan, the devil. We are giving you information that's going to free you from what Satan is telling you. It'll free you from all of the lies that Satan has told you, such as it's OK to do whatever you want. Such as there is no law no more. You ain't got to keep the law. That's a lie. That's a lie. We can go to the very last book in this Bible and see how blessed are those that keep his commandments because they have a right to the tree of life. That's the good news. So you mean that God has given us an incentive to do what's right. He's given us eternal life when we apply what he tells us to our life. So once again, he says, and recovering of sight to the blind, to the ones that cannot see. He actually did this physically and spiritually. He is opening up our eyes to the things that's in the word. Because you need the Holy Spirit to be able to understand what thus said the Lord. Go back and take a look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and starting at, just look at verse 14. All right. Well, start at verse 1 through 11, 1 through 14. I'm sorry. Over in 1 Corinthians 2. All right, so he says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is what the Lord was anointed to do. Let's go and take a look at something else. I got this uh, this Bible dictionary here. I want to open this up. This is uh, the pictorial Bible dictionary. We're going to take a look at the definition of gospel. Let's see what the gospel is. All right, so let's have a look at this, the gospel. So it says here, Gospel, the four Gospels. The word gospel is derived from the Anglo-Saxon God's spell or good tidings. So it's good news and is a literal translation of the Greek eugelion, which meant originally a reward for bringing good news. And finally, the good news itself. So the good news is this information that's coming from out of heaven that we need to believe the father. Believe his son and repent and be baptized for the remission of our sins so that we can receive the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost doing? Leading us and guiding us into all truth. And he is sealing us up for the day of redemption. He is walking us all the way to the end so that we can get salvation after this life is over. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing. So once again, it says in the New Testament, the term is applied to the revelation of god's plan for reconciling man to himself by forgiving his sin and by transforming his character so we don't do the same things that we used to do the sin that we used to do man that was exceed it's exceeding sinful now you can't even we can't even formulate our mind to to think evil like that because it gets casted down because we know that the Lord is searching our heart. This is why we have to have an understanding of the gospel. These are the benefits that the gospel is bringing us. It's, it's increasing our quality of life. You able to cast out devils. You able to have knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the creator. Let's see what else it says. It says the gospel is the story of God's gift of salvation through the person and work of Christ which the church has been commissioned to proclaim. So it's, it's up to us because the church is the people, not the building. Because church didn't turn into so, social clubs nowadays. There's no fear of God really in the church. Nobody hold each other accountable really. 
Then when you do point out something, oh, you can't judge me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm correcting you. Ain't that what the book is for? But you got a lot of people that want to reject the word and they, they are called scorners. They don't like when you tell them the truth. They can't hear it. So the church has been commissioned to proclaim the gospel. Okay, the good news is it's good tidings. So imagine this. Imagine living in the world where you turned on your news and the only thing you heard was about what thus saith the Lord, how to be better. They putting positive things on the news as opposed to telling you about all of the destruction and chaos that's going on. See, if you telling people how to preach or how to uh, deal with what thus saith the Lord, you ain't got to worry about the chaos because people, they're going to start turning away from that crap. Once you start applying the word of God to your life and then you'll start just focusing on the kingdom of God. You won't be so scared or terrified about getting tossed in the lake of fire because perfect love casts out fear. When you love God perfectly, you won't be afraid of getting tossed in the lake of fire because you know that you have an, a good relationship with God. This is what the Holy Scriptures is doing for us. This is why God has compelled me to tell you all about this. And you have to read your Bible for your own. For your own self. You got to work out your own salvation. Because there ain't no telling how long they're going to uh, uh, allow this channel to stay up. But as God is allowing it to be here, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this word out. Because this is what we got to do. We got to hold each other accountable. Do what's right. But let's take a look at this. Matthew 9. And let's see the gospel being preached in action. Let's take a look at this. Matthew 9. Let's take a look at verses 27 through 35. Let's read this. So it says, And when Jesus departed thence, Two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. So you got these two blind men that's following Jesus. And this is amazing to me because how is it that they blind, but they following him? His sheep hear his voice regardless. It says, and when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, yeah, Lord. So he said, man, I, do y'all believe that I'm able to do this? This is the gospel. Believing that Jesus can do any and everything that you can ask him for, even above and beyond what you can ask and even imagine to ask him for. Now watch how he healed them. Then he then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So how much faith do you have in Jesus Christ? That's how he going to heal you. These people here are blind. This is the gospel. This is why when we read the Bible, we have to believe everything that's written in this Bible. It says, and their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them saying, see that no man know it. Jesus was so humble. He healed them. And then he said, don't tell nobody about it. But they couldn't hold water. It says, but they. When they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all their country. They couldn't help it. That's the good news. They got affected by the good news. They saw the work of Christ. Not only did they hear his message, but they not only did they believe him, I'm sorry, but they also spread it about what he did. This is the good news that they did, that they spread it. It says, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. So this man that couldn't speak. He had a devil on him. And a lot of times when you look at it, people, almost 100% of the time, these sicknesses and diseases that we deal with, these are devils. Because God said that Satan was going to go upon his belly and eat dust. And these afflictions, these uh, diseases that we get faced with, these diseases are consuming us, but spiritually there's a devil behind us plaguing us. That's why when Jesus was casting out devils or healing the sick, many devils came out. He was healing them with his word. He was commanding, come up out of there. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus name. Like we do for the brothers and sisters that tune into this channel. And even if they don't tune into this channel, we pray for them as well. We rebuke the spirit of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. All right. So once again, it says, and when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake and the multitudes marveled, saying it was never so seen in Israel. 
See, we got this kind of power because we working and operating by the power of the Father. Jesus told us this was going to happen. Go back and take a look at John 14 and 10 through 12. Mark 16, 15 through 18. It's in a few other places in the Bible that we got this power. God has equipped us with this along with the message of the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. That's why we have to have an understanding on why we need to apply these things to our life, people. Let's continue reading. It says, but the Pharisees said, he casteth out devils through the prince of devils. They called Jesus Beelzebub. That's blasphemous. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And all of the people came out because they was being healed. It had a benefit to what was going on here by preaching the gospel. I just want to flash something on the screen. What was that? Uh, Psalm 68, I believe that was. Let me go over here real quick. Psalm 68. Let me see if this is it. Psalm 68. I just want to show you something. Psalm 68. Verses 19 through 20, and it reads, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Don't you understand? God, there's benefits that come along with God. And he's given us these benefits every day, even the God of our salvation. God is a benefit to our life. But if you reject his gospel, you don't want to hear nothing that he's saying. He's not a benefit to you. You're on the outside. You're an enemy of God. It says, verse 20, he that is our God is the God of salvation. He's the God of deliverance. So if you got sicknesses, diseases, drug addictions, or whatever, whatever bad habits you have formed while you've been here on this earth, God can save you from that. It says, and unto God, the Lord belong the issues from death. He is able to save our soul from death, people. This is the good news that we are preaching. Let's go back to Luke now. Luke 9. Luke 9. And let's have a look at verses 1 through 6. Luke 9. And let's take a look at verses 1 through 6. And let's see what this says here. All right. Luke 9 verses 1 through 6. It says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. He gave the disciples power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And they also was equipped with the gospel message of the kingdom of heaven. Telling the people to repent, showing the good news to the people. See, the people need to understand why we need to read the Bible. They need to understand why we need to submit ourselves to the father and his son, Jesus Christ. They, people need to understand this because if they don't understand, they're going to continue on doing whatever they want to do until you make it clear to them. And all you got to do, your job is to plant the seed. The Lord is going to get an increase. We plant seeds and the Lord get an increase. Somebody else will come along and say something else. God do his job better than we can. Only thing that we get, we need to do, we need to do what he told us to do. So once again, it says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So these are the benefits that's coming along with believing the gospel. This is why we need to get some understanding and edification on the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Because you need to understand why we are doing this. It says, and he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor script, neither bread, neither money. Neither have two coats of peace. Don't take nothing with you because wherever you go, the people going to provide for you. Because you giving them the good news. It says, and whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide and thence depart. So stay there for a while, then go. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. So if they don't receive it, you ain't, you ain't tell them to stand there and argue and go back and forth with them. You call, but you ain't going to be chosen if you don't come to the marriage supper of the lamb. If you don't come, if you don't open up the invitation and do what the invitation is telling you to do, you ain't going to get it. 
It says, and they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So they had benefits that came along with preaching the gospel. They were also healing the people that were sick among them. Let's go to Luke 8. Let's back up one now. Because he said, don't take nothing with you, right? Let's go to Luke 8. Let's have a look at verse 1. Let's see what they were doing when they was preaching the gospel. Luke 8 and 1. It says, and it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the 12 were with him. So Jesus went through preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. So let's just take a, a moment to think right now. Whatever church you belong to or whoever you listening to, what is their message? Is their message always bashing and railing on somebody? Always condemning somebody? Oh, you going to hell, you... Is that the message? And if that's the message, maybe you need to reconsider who you listen to. Because the gospel of the kingdom of God is the glad tidings. It's the good news that you need to repent. Not that we trying to keep nobody locked in. That's bondage. You're doing the same thing the scribes and the Pharisees was doing. Oppressing the people. The word of God will make you free. That's why Jesus told us if you believe his word... And, and actually do it, the truth will set, set you free. It'll keep you free from sin and death. But anyway, verse two, it says, and certain women which have been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. It just said Mary Magdalene had seven devils. It never mentioned nothing about her being a whore or a prostitute. So I don't know where they get this stuff from, but this is why we can't add and take away from the scriptures. We got to read the scriptures exactly how they read. What thus saith the Lord, not what thus said Pastor uh, Reverend Willie Lowdown. None of these other guys. What do the Lord say? Not what I say. What do the Lord say? This is the true authority right here. It says in Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Whoa. So they was preaching the gospel. And this is why God was saying, don't take no personal script because people going to provide for you when you provide the word of God. You ain't got to worry about that. They going to take care of you. So once again, let's go and have a look at something else. Matthew 28. Because even after the death of Jesus, his message never changed. Let's see what he commissioned once again. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, and it reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power was given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus Christ got all power because the Father committed all power unto him. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go and teach, not condemn, not bash. Not be railing on nobody, but teach them. It says, teaching them to observe all things. No, 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 no. Verse 19, once again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That name is Jesus. When you go back and take a look at uh, Acts 2 and 36, you'll see that Peter preached and baptized in the name of the lord jesus christ so that's the name that we use people if you speak hebrew whatever name you call them on in hebrew but verse 20 it says or whatever other language you use it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world so you got to go and teach people and this is how we do it let me show you something over here in second timothy Second Timothy, this is what we need to do. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2 and verse 24. It says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. So the servant of the Lord, you got to be gentle. Just because somebody don't understand like the way the way you do right now, that don't mean that they ain't gonna get it. You got to be patient. You have to be patient because you are a teacher and a representative of Christ Jesus. It says in meekness 
instructing those that oppose themselves. See, you got to these people don't even know that they are enemy of against against themselves. It's your job as the servant of God to show this to them. OK, in meekness. The same way you would want somebody to show you, just like, you know, when you first heard the word. It wasn't easy to hear, but but it rested on your conscience and you wind up having to change your heart. But what if that person who told you about the word was bashing you and railing? You'd be like, no, nah, the fruit of the spirit ain't there. And the first the first fruit of the spirit is love, which is God. So if a person is lacking love, they are lacking God. There is no love. There is no God. It says in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. God will give you grace and mercy because you acknowledge the truth and you decide to have a change in lifestyle. This is the gospel of the good news of the kingdom of heaven. It says in that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So now you are empowering people to fight against Satan, the devil. You are increasing their faith. You're giving them words of encouragement to tell them to keep fighting, keep going, don't give up. That's what's going on. This is the understanding that we need to have about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Let's continue looking at this now. Romans 10. Romans 10. And let's have a look at verse... Let's just start at verse 10. Let's read this because in order to have a gospel preached to you. Well, first of all, the man has to be qualified. If he ain't sent from God, he's sent from Satan. Simple as that. But anyway, let's go over here. Romans 10 and let's read 10 down to 17. So it says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So everything we do starts in our mind. So once we grab hold and start believing the gospel of the kingdom of heaven that jesus christ was sent to die for our sins and we understand that we cut off this flesh because of what jesus christ did for us on that cross and not only on the cross throughout his whole lifestyle here when he walked around in the flesh he committed himself to the father it says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation out of, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whatever is on your mind, that's what's going to come out. It says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Whoever you are, white, black, brown, it don't matter. Whatever color you are. Because you have people out here that's saying only a certain group of people can get salvation. That's false. The scriptures is telling us, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You won't be put to shame for your faith in a father and in his son, Jesus Christ. You will not be. You'll never be. Because the scriptures can't be broken. That's why when we read this Bible, we have to have faith in what we read. <coughs> excuse me. All right. So uh, once again, it says, <coughs> excuse me, for the scriptures saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So if you believe on Jesus Christ, you will never be put to shame. It says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Whoever you are, out of whatever nation you are. If you call on the name of the Lord, he's rich unto you when you call unto him. Remember how we read in uh, Psalm 68 about the Lord being our benefit. <clears throat> we need to take advantage of this, people. Put that phone down sometimes. Go and read your Bible. Put some time down to, to read what thus saith the Lord. Read on your own. Okay. Verse 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how, shall they and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you need a preacher. How you going to hear unless somebody then told you about something? That's how you know God is real because there is no reason to uh, uh, deny somebody that don't exist. And when somebody bring you his word, they bringing you something. They ain't bringing you nothing. Somebody said this. 
It's the truth. It's the word of God. So it's the wrong thing you want to deny and reject. You want to accept this. But once again, you need a preacher. The preacher got to be sent from God. Not somebody that sat in jail. Oh, yeah, I want to uh, I want to be a preacher now. Or somebody woke up overnight and even you got little kids out here, five years old. Boy, what, what you going to tell me? You're still playing with toys and Lincoln logs, Fisher Price. What you going to tell me? What kind of what kind of advice you going to give me about life? You are you're a kindergartner. You got kids out here like this. But it's the parents fault because they've been taught wrong. But anyway, I ain't condemning or bashing. It's out of order. But once again, it says verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? God got to send you. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Their path is beautiful. Their feet is beautiful. They are held in the highest regard with God. Because they've taken care of his business. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. So they ain't all obey the good news of God. Nope. Because everybody don't have faith. And that's a shame that you don't have faith in God. It says, for Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, people. Let's go and take a look at something. That's why you got preachers and pastors out here. They're supposed to be leading the people in the correct way. This is what a true pastor is going to do. Let's go and take a look at some more of the wisdom of King Solomon. Let's take a look at this in Ecclesiastes 12. Let's read verses 8 through 11. It says, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. All Everything that we're looking at is temporary. It don't mean nothing. The only thing that means something in this life is the word of God. Nothing else. It says, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. That's why, you know, a good preacher or a pastor that's leading the people, he going to take his time. He going to navigate through this Bible and he going to get a people what it is they need. He's going to feed the sheep just as Jesus commissioned Peter to do and the rest of the apostles and us as well. I can't sit down here and just put anything together. I can't just go on the internet and oh yeah, I'm going to do that. No, I pray. I ask God, show me what you want me to do and he'll give it to me. Sometimes I just be going throughout the day. I got to pull over somewhere, or sit down and write out the lesson because as God is pouring it out on me, I'm like the pen of a ready scribe. Lord, here I am. Talk to me. Show me what you want me to do. I'm here for you and your people. I'm not, I don't care about nothing else. Just like I was in the world yielding my members as uh, members of unrighteousness. Everything I do now is for the glory of the Lord. All praise, honor, and glory be unto the Father in Jesus' name. He going to be glorified. So once again, it says, verse 10, the preacher sought out or sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. See, the truth will set you free from lies, people. The truth will get you eternal life. It says the words of the wise are as golds. What are golds? They are like eight foot sticks with a spike on it. <clears throat> that get stubborn cattle to go the right way. So it's pricking your conscience to move you in the right direction is what the words of the wise are. All of the wisdom in this Bible came from out of the mouth of God because holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It says as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd once again. They prick you into doing what's right and then they lock you in place is what the words of the wise do. That's what the words of the Lord do. It said, which are given from one shepherd, the, the chief shepherd is Jesus Christ. He is wisdom. So now let's continue on. Let's go over here to Ephesians 4. Let's take a look at this. Ephesians 4. Let's read verses 11 through 15. Then we're going to skip down. And I didn't intend for this lesson 
uh, to be this long. But uh, it don't got nothing to do, do with me, no way. I, I let the spirit move me how he does. And that's just all it is to it. I'm not uh, rushing or doing anything like that. If you feel that this these videos are too long, I don't know what to tell you. Because you can sit down and watch a Super Bowl game for about, what, three hours? But you can't hear what thus saith the Lord for an hour and some change? Or 45 minutes? I don't think you're going to like the kingdom of heaven because you got... It, it ain't going to be nothing but about what thus saith the Lord. And there's angels that sit around the throne crying, holy, 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 day and night. You think they concerned with some football game or whatever? Man, they got a job to do. But anyway, I know we human beings. I'm not trying to be righteous over much or holier than thou. I'm just saying. Give some time to God, too. All right. So Ephesians 4. Let's see what the Lord did. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So God has given us people <clears throat> that's going to be down here representing God in the proper way for the edification of God. Okay, it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So we ain't going for all kind of false doctrine anymore because we stand fast standing on the truth. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So we are turning the hearts of the people back to the Lord. Speaking the truth in love. God is love. Let's continue looking at this. Let's skip down to verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So when we use in our speech, in our mouth, people, we're supposed to be uplifting and edifying people, not tearing nobody down and condemning and saying what all of this stuff that's contrary to the word of God. We can't do that. Matter of fact, let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. And let's have a look at Proverbs 10 and verse 20. It says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. So it's, it's very valuable. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Whoa. So when you got a wicked person, <laughs> they heart is of w little worth. Like uh, my sister Pat said, they ain't got no substance. The tears. <laughs> the heart of the wicked is little worth. It says the lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for one of wisdom. What is the lips of the righteous feeding the people? knowledge understanding okay that's what this is doing let's continue looking at this let's skip on over to uh let's skip down to verse 31 it says the mouth of the just bring it forth wisdom but the forward tongue shall be cut out so the mouth of the just is bringing forth wisdom telling you about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven bringing the good news lifting the people up Delivering people out of their affliction. Let's see what else it says. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. So the righteous, we know what's good. We know what's pleasing and pleasurable to the Lord. But what's the wicked doing? They speaking for they speaking frowardness. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, people. All right. Once again. Let's go over here because we winding this down. Let's go over here to Proverbs 12. Because when you're feeling down and out, man, you need somebody to comfort you. That's why when you feeling down and out, sometimes you listen to music that's relatable or comforting to you. Try the word on for size. It says, this is Proverbs 12 and 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. So when you sad, when you feeling broken, gonna make you it's gonna it's gonna make you feel weak like you don't want to do nothing it'll send you into a depression 
However, what's happening when the servant of God is coming with the word of God? They got that medicine, that comforting oil, that balm. What they got? But a good word make it they glad. Ooh, a good word make it they glad. Yeah. The word of God strengthens us. Sometimes all we need to hear is, man, you're going to be all right. Or it's okay. You can do it. Sometimes we need that. We need that comfort. That's why you got to surround yourself with people that's going to uplift you and not tear you down. That's why I feel sorry, man, for those that's, you know, out there in the world that got to go out and be dealing with all of these people like we all do. Listen, find you somebody that's going to build you up. Keep company with them people. Because even when you got people, even family members, they ain't never got nothing good to say, always speaking down on somebody. It's like, man, they bring you down. It's really a drag. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Proverbs 25. Because we winding this down. Proverbs 25. Let's take a look at verse 25. So it says, it's cold waters to a thirsty soul. You know how like you be tired, got done playing basketball or working out, you drink some cold water, it's so refreshing, right? What are you comparing it to? So it's good news from a far country. What's that good news? The gospel. That's the benefit of the gospel. It's almost like it's quenching your thirst. That's why Jesus was saying, uh, come unto me uh, uh, and drink of the fountain of the living waters. God is providing refreshments for us through his Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go and take a look at something else. I just want to flash something on the screen. We're not going to read this, but uh, I want you all to take a look at this on your own because uh, Paul was saying, how should they preach except they be sent? So over here in Acts 8, and when you read 26 through 35, this Ethiopian man, he needed somebody to guide him through the scriptures because he was reading Isaiah the prophet and the Holy Spirit told him to go over here and uh, uh, join yourself with this chariot and get this man some understanding. And he did just that. And what happened was the, the eunuch, he had a question about who he was reading about over there in Isaiah 53. He said, was the prophet speaking of himself or was he speaking of somebody else? And from that point on, let me show you what Philip did. Verse 35, it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So why would he preach unto him? Because Jesus is our life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So that's a good place to start. When you sharing the gospel with somebody, start with Jesus. I don't never tell nobody opening up no conversation. Oh, yeah, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. What do that mean? No, I'm a servant of God. I'm a disciple of Christ. That's why it's a good place to start with Jesus. Start with him. All right. And another thing, let's go over here to Isaiah 62, because he said that this gospel had to be preached for a witness throughout all of the world. And then shall the end come. Right. But how long is this going to happen? Let's see what Isaiah prophesied about over here in Isaiah 62. Let's read verses six through seven. So what did God say he did? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Always talking about what thus saith the Lord. It says, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Don't keep silent, man. You better spread the gospel. It says, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Did the Lord come back and set up his kingdom in Jerusalem yet? Not at all. This is why we have to preach this gospel until the Lord comes back. That's what we need to do. So let's continue. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. And let's have a look at verse 1. Hebrews 4 and verse 1. This is why it's so important to believe the gospel and get some understanding about what you read. Because when you understand, you have a clear comprehension on what you're dealing with and why you are doing it. So now you ain't just walking in vain. You understand why you believe in the gospel. You understand why you trust in, in the faith for the blood of Jesus Christ. You, are, you got a clear understanding. 
Because for one, this is keeping us safe from evil. Because every last one of us has been faced with trials and tribulations and all types of calamities in our life before. All right. Once again, Hebrews 4 and verse 1. Let's believe the gospel. <clears throat> it says, let us therefore fear lest the promise being less left of us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it because God has promised a day of rest. He has a time. And this is what the Sabbath days are pointing to. He has a time when he going to bound up or bind up Satan, the devil and lock him away for a thousand years. And there ain't going to be nothing but peace preached on the earth. Nothing but the gospel. Good news. You're going to learn about the Lord. Ain't nobody going to be able to uh, teach every man no more because the Lord is going to teach us. It says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the gospel was preached to the children of Israel back in the days of the wilderness, but it didn't profit them because they didn't have faith in it. So this is why I always encourage you all. I urge you all. I'm commanding you all to have faith in what we are reading. Have faith in the gospel. Let's continue looking at this. One last place on this subject, then we'll continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. All right, so let's see. What's the benefit of the gospel? Romans 1, verses 16 through 17, and it reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So whoever you are that believes, turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do what he is saying. We got many videos on this channel, if you've been following us for a little while, that explains what we need to do. But I advise you, whoever you listen to, read your Bible for yourself so that you can understand. Because we ain't going to be there with you on Judgment Day. God is judging every last one of us individually. So once again, this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. This is what's granting us immortality, people. Believe in the gospel. It says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written over there in Habakkuk 2 and 4, the just shall live by faith. So how much faith do we have in what we read in the Bible? So as much faith as we have. We use the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that God has given us to apply these things to our life so that we can deliver ourselves from the lake of fire so that we can live a great and a peaceable life now in this time and in the world to come. You can live a life like you never even imagined if you just be obedient. That's why I challenge you all. Every last one of you all that hear this video. Be obedient to the voice of the Lord starting by day one and don't turn around. Let this day today right now, let today be the day that you start believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and applying the things that God has given you understanding on to your life and see how it changes you. Please listen to what I'm saying. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm reading to you all. OK, believe this. So I challenge you all one day. Take it a day at a time. Apply everything that you read that day. Apply it to your life and see how your life change. All right. And give all praise, honor and glory to the Lord. Once you start seeing the changes in your life. All right. So once again, let's let it rest right there. Let's go over here now. Mark one verses 14 through 15. This is the mission statement of the channel. This is what we encourage every last one of you all to do to repent and turn back. To the Lord and believe the gospel. It says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So if we confess our sins and repent and believe the gospel, we can be saved. We can be saved from whatever we're dealing with right now in this lifetime and in the world to come, we can get eternal life. So with that being said, I'm humbly asking the Father in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, who, who forgives us of our sins, 
Please, Lord, extend your grace and your mercy toward us and forgive us of our sins and create within us, Lord, a heart that's going to perform your will perfectly so that we can be found worthy of your salvation and the first resurrection, Lord. So, Lord God, any one of us that's sick among us, anybody that's dealing with any uh, uh, diseases, once again, any stronghold set up by Satan, may the Lord God heal us of our diseases. May he cast these diseases out. May they never return as we acknowledge our sins and turn back to the Lord. May the Lord continue to take care of the fatherless, the widows, the less fortunate, the ones that's out there sleeping in the elements, the ones that's wrongfully in prison. May the Lord God have mercy and strengthen and heal and save us. So with that being said, family, I love you all so much. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow at around four o'clock, four or five. Lord willing, we can start on time tomorrow uh, with a live lesson. So I uh, hope to see you all there. And until next time, peace and love in the mighty name of Jesus.